Good morning, NBC. This is Pastor Charlie coming to you with uh, today's word. Today we'll be hearing from the book of Daniel, um, chapter 4, verses 19 through 27. Reading, our reading is for uh, November, Tuesday, November 24th. Then Daniel, also called Belteshazzar, was greatly perplexed for a time, and his thoughts terrified him. So the king said, Belteshazzar, do not let the dream or its meaning alarm you. Belteshazzar answered, My lord, if only the dream applied to your enemies and its meaning to your adversaries. The tree you saw, which grew large and strong, with its top touching the sky, visible to the whole earth, with beautiful leaves and abundant fruit, providing food for all, giving shelter to the wild animals, and having nesting places in its branches for the birds. Your Majesty, you are that tree. You have become great and strong. Your greatness has grown until it reaches the sky, and your dominion extends to the distant parts of the earth. Your Majesty saw a holy one, a messenger, coming down from heaven and saying, Cut down the tree and destroy it, but leave the stump bound with iron and bronze in the grass of the field while its roots remain in the ground. Let him be drenched with the dew of heaven. Let him live with the wild animals until seven times pass by for him. This is the interpretation, Your Majesty, and this is the decree the Most High has issued against my Lord the King. You will be driven away from, the pe from people and will live with the wild animals you will eat grass like the ox and be drenched with the dew of heaven. Seven times will pass by for you until you acknowledge that the Most High is sovereign over all kingdoms on earth and gives them to anyone he wishes. The command to leave the stump on the, str on the uh, stump of the tree with its roots, roots means that your kingdom will be restored to you when you acknowledge that heaven rules therefore your majesty be pleased to accept my advice renounce your sins by doing what is right and your wickedness by being kind to the oppressed it may be that then your prosperity will continue this is the word of the lord um what a uh, what a wonderful um, scripture this is uh, whenever we're dealing with prophecy, like even when we're going in through the uh, Revelation in the New Testament, there's so many references to the book of Daniel. And there's something that is going on in here that I want to point out as just uh, um, one of the main driving points. Now, uh, the first thing that I want to talk about was that uh, this king, Nebuchadnezzar, he's a, a Gentile king, not a, not a Jewish uh, person, but... Um, uh, the first point that I want to make was that uh, God wants to be known and acknowledged by not just the Israelites, but, but the whole earth. And he will use this the following means to actually raise a king like Nebuchadnezzar. And as we see in the dream, um, allowing him to grow so prosperous as to, to having, having his presence, has, having his being touched the, the heavens. That's a, that's a pretty mighty... Um, <laughs> desirable place to be in but I guess the failure comes in that he wasn't able to acknowledge even though he had uh, been granted all these things he had not been able to to detect or to give uh, worship to God who had made it all possible so later on we see that uh, he, t he takes the credit for himself it was his own efforts and uh, it was this, this self aggrandizement that leads him to the, the measure where God uh, is led to uh, lead him to to be being like uh, in the faculties that what he was given granted by the heavens is temporarily taken away where he'll be um, the former capacity to function as a high leader is taken away now he has to dwell with the animals for a period that, that is determined as seven times and uh, and this uh, will come to pass, and so the the uh, the recourse, the advice that 
that Belteshazzar or Daniel in our book gives to the king is to renounce sins. Repentance is what it's called for. Turn your attention from you know from where you're at to the living God. I mean, he doesn't even he doesn't even add that, but he says, um, renounce your sins by doing what is right, which uh, which indicates to us that to to all of us we have some sense of knowledge of what is right, and uh, uh, renounce your wickedness by being kind to the oppressed. This is something that uh, we may not realize, but uh, in society. There are people that are oppressed, even in such small units as, as a family. There could be a person that could be oppressed because of, of the presence of an oppressor. So I, I believe that it, this is very, very uh, uh, disclosing of, of God's character and his nature, that uh, he trusts himself foremost for the harmony and the peace of all, all the affairs throughout the whole earth. And that not a singular character has to assume the position of a totalitarian or a despot or or some kind of a singular authority. Um, therefore, um, for each and every one of us, I think that this could be a, a quite a, uh, a nourishing and a encouraging text. Uh, that no matter what happens throughout this season. God is sovereign, and the people that uh, may be acting senselessly for the time being, uh, they will God will intervene, and they will uh, God will allow them to go through a season where their present faculties are temporarily suspended, so that they will be able to recognize and to to be aware of the living God who makes it all possible. So, knowing this, all of you all, I want you to have a great week in the Lord. Have a triumphant Thanksgiving week. Uh, each and every one of you. Happy Thanksgiving, everybody.